Hi class, welcome back to online science class. Today we'll be learning about social interactions. This is a continuation from the last video where we talked about ecosystem dynamics. Let's review. In the last video, we discussed what an ecosystem is and what will happen to ecosystems when a disturbance hits the area. Now, let's say that an ecosystem fully recovered and lots of animals and plants repopulated the area. Let's see how being part of a group benefits the animals. If you've ever been on a safari in Africa, you might have seen lots of animals such as wildebeests, lions, zebras, and cheetahs. You could also find these animals in the zoo. What do these animals have in common? Pause the video and look at the animals to find a similarity. Welcome back. If you noticed, they all are in groups. Wildebeests and zebras live in herds, lions live in groups called prides, and male cheetahs live in groups called coalition. This is not limited to just safari animals. Animals all around the world form groups and interact with each other to survive. Wolves, dolphins, orcas, ants, bees, chimpanzees, and other animals all live in groups. You might be wondering, why do animals live in groups? What's the benefit of being in a group? Just as we humans live with our family members and other people from tribes, being in a group helps animals obtain food, defend themselves, and ultimately just to survive. These groups differ in sizes. They can be either really big or small or in the middle. For example, the average pack is about six wolves, while zebras can travel up to a thousand in a herd. Pretty impressive, right? Let's explore the reasons of forming these groups. First, collecting food. When you go grocery shopping with your mom or your family to Costco or Trader Joe's, it is much easier for both of you to work together to get all the supplies quickly. If there's a heavy item, two hands are better than one to lift the item and put it into the cart. Putting the items on the cashier belt, unloading and loading the items from and into the car are all quicker when you work together. Similarly, animals divide the work and that group work together to bring food for the others. Male wolves and lions will go out hunting uh, for zebras or deers and will work together to tackle the prey. A great example of this organization is honeybees. Bees are smart and uh, are great examples of social interactions because they are very organized and cooperative. One of a uh, worker bee's jobs is to feed the colony by collecting nectar from plants. They do a dance called a waggle dance to communicate to other bees saying, hey, there's a flower here, which means there's nectar. So they bring back the nectar as a team and share it with the other bees. It's very fascinating. Second, defense. When your friend is being bullied by a group of mean kids, you bring your other friends and tell the bullies to stop being mean to your friend, right? Similarly, an advantage of having many animals is that there are more eyes to scan for any danger. When they spot a threat, they will alarm the others in the group to quickly seek for safety so the members will not be captured or killed. For example, meerkats stand up to look out for predators. When they spot one, they will alert the other meerkats for them to dig burrows and make these tunnels for them to escape the predators. Third, migration. Traveling alone can be scary because there's no one to protect you when you're in danger, and it's also not that much fun. When you travel in groups, there's less risk of being in danger because there are people around you to protect you, and it's much more fun. Similarly, animals migrate in big groups for safety. Animals such as wildebeest travel hundreds of miles and are in risk of danger, such as being captured by predators. Traveling in herds will decrease this risk and allow them to make a safe passage. So what have we learned today? We learned that animals form groups and interact with each other to survive. Groups are advantageous because animals who use this benefit to obtain food, defend themselves, and travel safety to protect each other. 
Working together creates an organization of members and makes work easier and more efficient. Humans have an and animals share these characteristics, allowing us to make a lot of connections between human and animal social interactions. I hope you learned something about animal interactions in this video, and remember to complete the worksheet provided in the description box below. Thanks for watching! Bye!